And hello everyone, welcome hello. back. I'm Rakofi297. Yes, and I'm back <laughs> again. You're back, you're back. <laughs> Where have you been? Where have you been? Uh, that's a good back. question. Where was I last week? <laughs> oh, I was at a client meeting last week. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But I, I promise I will be on every <laughs> episode for the rest of the year. I promise. Ooh, that's a that's a huge commitment, man. That's a huge commitment. Even if, <laughs> even if the one at at the end of November, I think I'm going to be in Australia. So it'll be like the middle of the night for me. But I, I promise I will still make it. <laughs> still make it. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, you've been also attending uh, some cool events during the week, this week, right? Yeah. Because I, 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 we even talked about some AI, uh, Microsoft events. It was Build AI. Is that correct? Yeah. So Build AI Day was yesterday in London. And they had a keynote from Scott Hanselman. They had some yep. big AI people like Seth Juarez and uh, Amy Boyd from their advocacy teams. Um, people like Burke Holland, some like, you know, big name, big name Microsoft people. Uh, the day before oh. as well, I think it was Microsoft Envision, which is a little bit more for uh, business sales people. I didn't go to that, but they had Satya Nadella there speaking. Like it was a proper packed out, uh, packed out event, let's say. So it was good. It was good yesterday. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I saw some pictures on, on Twitter before even I realized that you are there as well. Uh, yeah. And it looked really, really nice. And, uh, and uh, what, what would you tell us and our Umbraco community about AI then? What we should be um, uh, interested in or worried about? So, okay, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that was particularly interesting and eye-opening. But yeah. I, think, I think the message I took away from this is uh, OpenAI and Microsoft are so far ahead of everybody else. It's, mm -hmm. it's really quite impressive. So if you're already using .NET and Azure, it just makes sense to be able to use the OpenAI services that Azure has available. It just makes sense to you know, bring a little bit of power to your applications. And what would have taken, say, two years to build before, you can do in about an hour nowadays with a few API calls. Incredibly accessible, incredibly affordable as well. Um, it's it's really, really interesting space. So uh, yeah, I, even... Was it a couple of weeks ago? Google went, haha, look, we can do so much better than Chat GPT. We can summarize documents, we can do photo search, we can respond with images. And then OpenAI just went, ah, oh, yeah, there you go. We've, we've, we've got <laughs> they are they are so far ahead of the competition at this point. Um, mm -hmm. it's it's really quite incredible. I, I've I've realized this week that uh, it's not only about using AI now, it's more about finding out the personalized way of using AI with your kind of custom extensions. Because I have a couple of Polish friends who uh, who are doing an amazing job in this field. They even kicked out the um, uh, program called AI Desk for developers. So how you can uh, evolve, uh, evolve as a developer using AI in your daily job and life. And it's amazing. And it, they've built a custom data sets, custom tool tips, custom uh, um, help. And generally, one of the good examples was that some translations that took a couple of months earlier right now were done in, in minutes, yeah. uh, thanks to the really good data sets and instructions. And uh, so, yeah, we will definitely exp experience, I would say, the, the, the change of the market even bigger than we are right now experiencing, mm -hmm. because a lot of people uh, will find time or <laughs> lose their job. Uh, to do something else because uh, everything and not everything, a lot of things could be really enhanced and automated. Yeah, which is awesome. Which is awesome. I've uh, I've also started playing with something. I don't have that much free time. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, from where before, like I would have spent my weekends or some evenings hacking around on packages, that sort of thing, some little ideas. I can't do so much of that anymore. But uh, I I said this on Umbra Coffee before. There is a space, a gap in the kind of AI tooling and has got where I think it's people have missed the point of putting AI in there as like, again, being an assistant type thing rather than to generate content. It's quite a boring use case, in my opinion. So I started trying to get it, trying to train a model that could learn how to create a doc type, for example. So you could do a kind of co-pilot-esque example. I got as far as it will generate me the C-sharp code that I need to actually programmatically create a doc type. So I've, that's, I've that's nice. given it enough training data to say when I when I ask for a property, it's what this it means. Uh, it's yeah, can basically run a command and say build me a doc type called this with these properties, and it's just text fields at the moment, but it, it will go do that. So I, I'm slowly working towards a way that I can package that up somehow and make that like a copilot esque experience in the back office where you could say, you know, I, my example before was you create a doc type called SEO 
and it knows already that you're going to want a title, a description, an image, and it just sort of builds it out for you. That's what I'm trying to get to. But I've been playing, and again, mind blowing how powerful and quick and easy actually it was to get to that point. The most difficult yeah. bit is putting a nice, friendly interface on it, but the the code gen stuff's really powerful. So. Yeah, yeah. Well. Coming. Exci yeah, exciting, exciting times, definitely. So, uh, yeah, and, and we have uh, uh, October, <laughs> which <laughs> which is a month for we, and a lot of the other people also are, are hacking uh, a lot. So we might experience some more of really interesting use cases, and not only use cases, but ex ex uh, examples of uh, AI, maybe on Rock and other things uh, being used together. How's your uh, uh, How's your Oktoberfest going, Marcin? Because I've oh, my, mine is mine is perfect. Mine is perfect. I've opened GitHub once because uh, <laughs> I'm not using GitHub on my daily basis as well now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's going according to the plan. To the plan. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm in a similar position there. I've not, I've not done anything. I mean, I've, that's a lie. I've done, I've done talks and I've done event stuff, but that mm -hmm. only counts in the Embraco one. I've not even submitted it as an activity in honesty yet. I, I don't have the the mental capacity. I think yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I mentioned it here, but uh, generally I decided to take something what is was called Wednesday for myself. So I decided to take a Wednesday off and do simply nothing. <laughs> I just wake up and uh, and await what I want to do. Unfortunately, GitHub and contributions to open source weren't uh, yeah. <laughs> triggering my, my days. I was yet. going to ask if so if you have your your march in wednesdays you do anything you want yeah have you successfully managed to do nothing because doing nothing is harder than doing something yes and that's that's exactly what i really wanted to share because i've managed to really stop myself from pushing myself to do anything which i didn't yeah. want to do i've managed to also catch up on some of the projects that i and, and things that i promised for people and i completely abandoned it so i rebuilt my uh, relations with a couple of the good friends that were relying on my uh, my information for a long long time uh, so yeah, it, it was really successful. Unfortunately, I'm uh, run out of my uh, abilities to take the, the days off like that right now. So uh, so yeah, but it's something what I really um, um, uh, encourage everyone to to practice because, as you mentioned, for people who are uh, busy by by choice, it's really hard to do nothing, and that's yeah. the practice which I try to practice now. To be fair, uh, we should we should have a chat at some point about work life yeah. balance and that sort of thing. Oh, which yeah. I, it's a really interesting oh, yeah. topic. But, but the idea of taking a Wednesday versus a Friday or a Monday, some people have preferences, want to break their week up into these little micro weeks of two days, or some people rather just yeah. have a longer weekend. Really, really interesting topic. If, you, if, you, if that sounds interesting to you and you want us to do an episode on it, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. I have a lot of feedback gathered from friends' experiences and myself included, so I'm happy to share that outside of our mm. normal activities. Let's, let's talk about it one day. Uh, and then let's go back to Abraka stuff, because uh, yes. uh, even this week was, uh, we, we kind of expect a lot of the things to be fair, uh, to be released by the end of the month for sure. But there was a hackathon uh, happening this uh, this weekend as well. Yes. I, if there is anyone who participated, please uh, share some comments on, on the chat and let us know how it went. We will highlight them over the time. Um, uh, but yeah, there is a lot of things also happening on the Abraka side. And we can start probably from the hardcore update uh, uh, shared by, by Jordan, um, uh, because uh, the, the headless offering from Dan Braco is getting uh, some more attention uh, now. And, and Jordan, who took over um, uh, the, the role of leading the team there, uh, now shares also what is happening there and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and what is going to be addressed uh, in the nearest future. Uh, and yeah, some uh, some uh, some changes there regarding the core dependencies and also the benefits of uh, Ambraco being upgraded to the net, uh, to the latest versions. Plus, what is interesting, uh, Ambraco workflow powers. That's something what I what I was partially ex expecting to to come to ha uh, hardcore, especially that content modeling, content publishing is something what might be a really in, unique selling point in Ambraco um, uh, headless offering. Uh, and yeah, now they're working also on the blog read editor for Hardcore, and uh, it's touched already to Q4 this year for the new size. So, so something I don't quite understand mm -hmm. from this, maybe I've misread the post. Yep. The block read editor is in Umbraco 11. Mm -hmm. So are they upgrading to Umbraco 11? Because currently yeah. it's was 8. So, yes. so what's happening there? That's what I understood, that it's a, a kind of 
potentially big update uh, uh, on, on, with the not only uh, by core dependencies. I believe this is what it, it all relates to. So the core dependency is the core Umbraco dependency upgrade. So uh, it will benefit from Umbraco version 11 here, right? Yeah. Well, it, they so, go yeah, but... saying the block grid released in Umbraco 11 will be available yes. in hardcore, which yeah. you can take either way. Like, are they are they making that work, or are they uh, or are mm. they upgrading? It's it's not entirely clear. But uh, either way, I think it sounds like a sounds like a great improvement um, to to add to the product. The mm -hmm. other thing that I'm confused about is the new plans. <laughs> Naming. So all the plans have been renamed. So Mini becomes Starter, Starter becomes Standard, Professional and Enterprise keep their names, which mm -hmm. is better aligned with the way that the Embraco Cloud uh, regular plans are named. But then I believe Mini is sticking around. Hmm. So I think there's going to be the Mini tier below Starter, I think, because then it, it refers to Mini further down. I, I don't really understand it. I'm a bit confused. I think it will be just starter. starter. Uh, no, that, 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 that's where I, at least I understood the article here. But yeah, the, the renames uh, in theory are here to make it all align better with uh, the cloud offering. So uh, we can probably see that more kind of unification approach here on the cloud offerings. And of course, there was also related with uh, price increases and all the other changes that are going to happen uh, from the year 2024. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of a lot of small things that probably will not affect a lot of the people who are going to use the platform, but all of those who are using this and yeah. will be migrating, changing the plans and so on. It might put some uh, um, con confusions in place, but, but yeah, that's the transition period, I would say. Uh, but yeah, it, it seems like it's going to, uh, somewhere uh, ahead, and, and it's really hard. To be fair, I played a lot recently with, uh, with other CMSs and other headless platforms, no-code platforms, and so And it's, it's really uh, challenging these days to have something what will beat them, especially that I've realized how contentful, for example, is, is just leading everything. When well, it comes you shared to that technology. a few weeks ago, didn't you? You shared yes. the chart, and it's yeah. like, it's just a, it's a different league when you look at what's going on in the Embraco sphere in terms of the number of people using Contentful, Strapi, et cetera. Like, huge, yeah. huge user, user base. 500,000 installed a day of some of their uh, their SDKs. Yeah. Man. And I think right now the challenge for us as an Umbraco kind of developers would be to uh, decide if we should use hardcore or we should just use uh, APIs. And, and the powers for me at least are in customizations options of Umbraco and yeah. editor's experience to then be exposed through the APIs. And hardcore not yet, yet is not giving this uh, flexibility of, of, of extending the ways of managing content. So yeah. Yeah, it, it will be interesting. And GraphQL, I didn't mention that I, two weeks ago, I, w I was attending the conference uh, here in my hometown, which was uh, uh, packed on the very various uh, non-technology related topics, but GraphQL was one of them as a kind of shared layer of the communication. And it, I, I finally saw the huge potential of uh, uh, using it amongst the, the, some of the projects that I work with right now. Because I was not not convinced uh, too much to, to GraphQL uh, in the past, maybe because you know we are both coming from the backend uh, yeah. area of the of, of development. But now I see it. I see it, and I would love to see uh, more potentials of using GraphQL with uh, Umbraco. So yeah. that's where yeah. that's where hardcore might lead. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll definitely see that. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the block will be listed here, uh, and, uh, and yeah, we expect more updates from the teams there uh, whenever they will uh, come to us. Uh, releases, releases this week. Um, uh, our community configuration package was... From, uh, was... from Hugh, who's in the chat. Yeah. Hey, Hugh. Yeah. Um, Hugh. So yeah, a way of storing config in the database, which is lovely. I like this a lot. Um, it's I, I, It reminds me a little bit of the package that I've got for storing secrets, kind of a similar concept yes. in a database table. Um, and then you can access them through the uh, configuration there. Well, if I had a feature request for this, I'd love a, uh, a configuration provider. So you can you can register additional like oh, that come on, it's com configuration sources or something, and you can mm -hmm. wire it up so it could query the database when you need a, a key out of there. Um, so you could just use the regular I, I, uh, 
I can figure it out. It just keeps working. But yeah, this is awesome. And there's so much of a need for this sort of thing. Like all too often we've had to store a value somewhere in the database, whether that's in content or in custom tables, something like that. But yeah, this is having it in a package is super handy. Super, super handy. Yeah. And also, I've realized recently how how far uh, ahead was the difference of um, how different was the configuration in Umbraco since the version seven eight. Yeah, because uh, I, I I didn't do that much development myself, uh, and now I started to be more in depth uh, when it comes to some of the projects and said, oh, so we can where is the examine configuration in this project? <laughs> oh, it, it doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, totally. Uh, and, yeah, now I realize how important it is to have this kind of shared interface of managing configuration because then you have right now the danger is unfortunately in having too many ways of automated plugins to control how we configure things. But uh, but this kind of uh, stuff is the way how .NET uh, uh, registrations are done. So yeah. uh, I think it will be pretty common to use. But yeah, yeah, I agree. interesting. Uh, the next one is Invisible Notes for Embraco 10 from Luke. Um, so again, they kind of, I can't remember the name of the package done by Satiris back in the days, but it was like... Yeah, something. is it Virtual Notes? doing the same, Virtual Notes, yes, that was Virtual Notes, yes. So it was doing the same kind of uh, stuff, so it was bypassing some uh, nodes within the roots, uh, and yeah. here we can also do this kind of Invisible Notes uh, in Embraco 10 Plus. So yes. really There's cool. also a version of this for Embraco 8 uh, below. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if there is actually a difference in the package because uh it, it looks like the same package and it's got the same maybe uh, targeting uh, maybe libraries I'm not really sure yeah. not really sure but yes there is a there is a different version for eight as well yeah so these two and uh abraco honeypot uh integration yeah, uh, on this one yeah. um i've not used this but again it's something that we need on most sites so <laughs> to be fair um <laughs> And and plenty of some uh, and plenty of other updates, right? To yeah, to vendor, construct. Matt's been busy this week. Uh, e marketing suite, SEO toolkit. Uh, yeah, a whole yeah, lot, a whole lot of updates to packages. Yep, and we've mentioned some of the other packages last week too. So uh, I haven't seen this one yet. Uh, this uh, RSS this view. Do as well the RSS or not RSS? I think this is an RSS feed consumer, so it will actually read an rss feed into the back office mm, in, in, um, in the property editor, yeah, yeah as well, okay. rather than read uh, rather than you know outputting rss i, I think it's yeah. a reader which is cool yeah. i do remember one of the really nice use cases when we were just using some rss articles and selecting them to be published as umbrac articles from yeah the paper, so that would be cool uh, so yeah, that's the releases uh, and events now. Events probably that's the biggest section to discuss this this week. <laughs> that's what that's Quite a lot of events, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. But we can start from a summary of one of the events that you've been also attending, Callum, which is US uh, Summit. Uh, yeah. There is a huge, huge uh, photo gallery of those. Of, those uh, cups, by the way, just just to start. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Those cups, that's they more. look normal size. They are not normal size. <laughs> They are like, like this in comparison. To American America. size. American it's size. Like, I think it's like a two liter cup or a one and a half <laughs> liter cup. Something insane. That's um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. They were not. They were not considered uh, as something dangerous in in the in the no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, you can kind of start to see the scale next to a yeah, regular. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to have one. I would love to have one. But yeah, I, I drink I, I drink coffee of this size daily. So that's <laughs> that's insane. Anyway, yeah, lots of nice pictures of the community from the event. Um, it wasn't as dark as the pictures make it look. Um, but the uh, yeah, really good yeah, pictures. Yeah, really there's some good pictures, pictures. and um, also some nice pictures of the business summit, which I didn't get to attend, but like uh, the space looked really awesome. So yeah. yeah. Still, that's I have cool. something on my bucket list uh, to to pr present. Uh, in the theater like this on the screen size like that, like that right I, I do remember one of the uk festivals right in the theater and it was already yeah. a huge screen but i, the, I can the... tell you so I've, i present when i presented at like ndc oslo for example yeah they do that event in a big arena so it's like a, a huge huge concert arena and what they do is they hang stages from the ceiling to align with the the kind of arena seating that's just a wall of people mm -hmm. and then there's a massive screen and so you're standing yeah. on the stage that is slightly wobbling and shaking because it's literally hanging on chains and just looking at a wall of people the screen's mm -hmm. massive it took for me to get a picture of my screen it took me to have to walk like halfway up the auditorium to actually get the 
the screen in the picture. It's quite incredible, quite a surreal experience. Um, I can I can recommend it. It's definitely on my speaker's uh, bucket list. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there was also a U.S. Uh, after movie, U.S. Summit after movie, um, which was released this week, uh, and yeah, so it's it's uh, the the video version <laughs> with you guys there. Joe had a Joe had a habit of every time Johnny had his camera out filming, video Joe filming. would pull a silly face or do something silly, and when I found out about that, of course, yeah, that's nice. But yeah, really nice video, and now we can see the size also of these walls that uh, that were painted there, right? So that's. Uh, yeah, pretty cool, uh, cool video, and good to see some uh, familiar faces. And yeah, it's, it is uh, seasons of festivals and, and conferences now, so we can definitely uh, inspire. And <laughs> that, that was the size of the cup. Yeah. <laughs> really nice one. Cool. So that's uh, we will link it up as well in the in the video, and everyone yeah. can can uh, can uh, can rewatch, uh, find themselves, or maybe feel the the need of attending some of the events that are ahead of us. Uh, because of, of that and starting from the events this week um, uh, and, and soon uh, maybe, maybe upcoming week of course so there's a Hacktober special in Edinburgh and Brock oh, there are more Hacktoberfest events this week yes so. Edinburgh I guess is a hackathon a bit like uh, the one that was yeah. last weekend and London as well yeah also. it's a hacking and stuff I think London's uh, on Wednesday yeah the London one's virtual as well so anybody can join that and, uh, and dial in Oh, so there will be a chance to to do some contributions online as well. Is there is there is, uh, are there still any bugs left in Umbraco after? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, it's bug free. Plenty of stuff that can be done on packages, though. Don't don't forget about packages. Yeah, that's true. Uh, cool. And, and yeah, Richard uh, earlier shared the comment here that the hackathon was great. And and, uh, and yeah, I think it was. Uh, we can probably take a look on, uh, later on on some GitHub pull requests uh, uh, to see. How, how it progressed, but that's really good to see. Uh, the next one is um, is in Melbourne, uh, Umbraco Meetup Group, and it's also in-person plus virtual, uh, and it will be with Mario Lopez talking about the Bellissima release, and also Robert talking about uh, Umbraco Cloud CI CD that we discussed also recently. So uh, I would love to see it uh, in, in, in work. Uh, I haven't played with that yet, but it would yeah. be really good to see if someone already did explore how it works, uh, what it does, what it can do, what it can do. J uh, Jason on my team has been exploring it as well, and he's he's got some thoughts. I think I, I'll, I'll encourage him to share them publicly, maybe mm -hmm. in a book, because there's, there's times where you would use it and times where you absolutely wouldn't use it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he was also pretty active in the comments last uh, last time, so definitely blog about it, share something about it. Uh, we, we need to all uh, learn from this. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe. Use it. The next one is Kent Meetup, um, uh, also October 26. Uh, this one is uh, fully in person. Yep. So Matt uh, will be talking about the death of web configs, one of his talks that he shared uh, already somewhere. I think if I remember correctly. I've done that talk. Yeah. And Mike is talking about simplifying accessibility. So pretty good uh, set of talks yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, one more is Ambra Kumri. Uh, in, uh, also on the 26th. The same day. Yeah, the same day. Yeah. What a so pack. many meetups next week. Yeah, and here the, the Umbra Academia. Uh, writing an MSc computing research session about Umbra content. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, and Adam and Owen will talk about integrating Azure search with Umbra. So if, if that's what I think it is, the Azure Search talk, that's a really interesting one. And I believe they've productized it as well. So they've got a really mm. nice back office experience for constructing. Yeah, so, search in package for a search in. Yes. There we go. Fantastic. Let's get them on at some point and, and get a yeah. demo. If Matt, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Owen showed that off at Code Cabin last year, and it mm. was it was really really interesting. And they were talking about what they're going to do mm. with it. And then I saw Method Four this week, where at some events where they had some QR codes that uh, that, that shared information about that. And it went to a, I scanned it because I had to. Uh, and a page in Welsh that I didn't understand, so I kind of stopped reading. <laughs> they also had bananas with stickers on them, a swag, which I thought was really cool. And I'm wondering okay. if they're doing that at all all events, fruit with like a sticker on it, being like, ah, people are hungry, people need more fruit. Here's some swag. That's interesting. But yeah, I, I do remember also, you know, I, maybe you remember as well, Adrian did a lot of abstractions and implementations of Azure search interfaces back in the days. And there was a huge, huge potential and idea of pack packaging it to something what we can all benefit from. 
So yeah. that's definitely something what I will keep an eye on. And, uh, and yeah, definitely we need to get uh, Adam and Owen to talk sure. about it soon. Uh, so yeah, that's also October 26th. Uh, and uh, last uh, on, on the list of uh, meetups is Ambraco DK meetup in Odense. Uh, it's uh, it's in November already. <laughs> not, that, not that far away in time, but yeah, it is in November, so it's, uh, in the future. But November 1st, and, and this will be with Ambraco APIs and Ken uh, talking about it straight from the sources and potentially maybe something else. No, that's the one topic to be discussed there. And the day after the Umbraco UK festival starts, yeah. uh, and Callum, you mentioned that in the description that this is the last time to last last minute to buy yes. the ticket. Ticket sales are closing very early next week, so if you want to come, you have to buy a ticket like today or Monday. Mm -hmm. Basically, we need to confirm numbers for various things, and so yeah, you you have a very limited time left to buy tickets. Um, the other thing I would say is, uh, in the past, people have still tried like the day before. Oh, can we come? It's not going to be an option like physically not going to be an option so you have this is your only chance if you want to come buy a ticket now um load of great talks of course um yeah. load of uh you you mentioned last week that the schedule's up didn't you but the schedule's yes up. we, we want to go just... see the actual topics people will be talking about um a couple of slots might be moving around a little bit but for all purposes okay. the schedule's there <laughs> and yeah, uh, exactly. yeah i'm particularly so mounting your ui in the new back office that talk from niels i've seen two, three times since uh, September, and is uh, an amazing talk. Really, really, really good talk. Highly mm -hmm. recommend watching that. Um, the other couple that I'm excited about is the one from uh, Damian. Damian's going to do a, a talk on like his experience of going to Madagascar and using the web in Madagascar mm -hmm. and it not necessarily being the nicest experience. Again, really excited about that talk. Got Ponima, got, got a load of other ex excellent people speaking as well. So, yeah, not going to be one to miss. Oh, and I didn't mention, talks are not being recorded either. There's no recording of talks. If you want to see any of these talks, this is your only chance. Sorry. Bye. That's, the, that's the that kind of, I would say, that's the proper unifi unified experience for everyone attending the events and also it's including... There. I mean, it's a, it's a little sad because it means that there's not a single event in the Embraco calendar this year that has had talks recorded. Because Duke Fest didn't, uh, UK Fest won't. Uh, Code Garden had one track of talks recorded. Yeah. The US Summit didn't have any of the community talks recorded. Um, so Spark didn't either, of course. So the only mm -hmm. event, the only way the only way to attend events is to, sorry, the only way to see the talks is to attend the events. Yeah. I think maybe after COVID, that's fine. We want people to be there in person. Yeah. But also we talked about it from the organizer's perspective uh, when it comes to the cost of doing this versus the, the kind of versus value the and numbers yeah. after all. Uh, we get like we get like uh, 20 views on some of the videos. It's not it's not worth spending. Well, it's fine. But, we'll it, double, but double some, right to cover yeah, the, cost. The, 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 the fun fact was that someone reached out to me uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and found my talk from 2016 or 2018 from Polish festival regarding so, Umbraco myths. It was it was uh, Miguel, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, and he said, oh, do you have some s similar slides with Umbraco 10 or 11 myths and stuff like that to discuss with that? Oh, then I forgot that I gave this talk uh, yeah. and, and, and it's on YouTube still. So The other day I even memory. referred back to my Code Garden 10 Umbraco features you forgot existed talk. Mm. I was like, oh, damn, how, how do I do that? And I was like, oh, I've done a talk about this. Go back to the slide. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's how, exactly how I did it. So uh, yeah. they, they can be really helpful, but, oh, yeah. yeah. In, in the very rare cases, that's the, that's the unfortunately, true. But speaking about uh, recorded versions of our online talks uh, and, uh, and, and ability to see people through the virtual screen, there was one question <laughs> raised this week, right, on Twitter. Uh, should we do another community day? Uh, because you did one, one or two? There was one or two? Uh, there was one. We, the first one was last year. And if you look at the numbers, if you click into the tweet that, that Henk has yeah. quoted, uh, actually, and then click into the additional tweet, we had 1,150 yes. plus views, 550 unique people and 100, <sighs> over 100 people watching in one place at one time. I thought it went really well. I thought it was good fun. And uh, mm. a load of really exciting talks and just a nice way to break the ice after after Christmas. So... Um, so, yeah, we... <laughs> it's, if we're honest, it's happening. Of course, it's happening. We, we are doing another one. We have a date. We have all kinds of stuff sorted. But 
show your support if you want want to see it let, let's uh let's raise some awareness for it it'd be good to do a bigger mm -hmm. and better one wouldn't it and we'd love to get some uh, local user groups involved to host like little segments as well so hmm. maybe it's a room for idea like like microsoft built of course in the smaller scale like having the watch parties the the the, the, the joint uh yeah days and stuff well, like i can that. i can tell you for a fact oh, i'm sp i'm spoiling too much I'm spoiling. <laughs> I can tell you for a fact we've got the Microsoft Reactor space in London booked Ooh. on the date that we we want. So we're going to be doing a like a watch along or maybe a, a segment at the Embraer Lo uh, at the London Reactor. We're going to have mm. a studio in the Netherlands where people will be able to come along as well. We'd love to have Ooh. more. So more more yeah. locations again, like Microsoft built is the idea. Honestly, nice. nice. That's that's really good. And yeah, it it was. Uh... Please, please say. <laughs> Yep, and that's that's exactly you know these numbers were really nice uh, already, and it can be just better if we will mo uh, mobilize people and, and we will all contribute for the community day, community driven, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's another community topic to discuss. It's a U profile which is back. Uh, so uh, was the last one, I think the last U profile might have been like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Let's find that out. The, the, but yeah, this this year um, uh, this year we start from October. That's uh, that, that that's interesting. But, but yeah, Laura um, uh, was um, um, recognized as a new profile of this month, uh, and a lot of us knows Laura already, and you've been highlighting um, her activity a lot. But uh, she's working for back for eleven years, and the whole journey and all the involvements. Uh, I don't know if all activities, but majority of her activities. Are mentioned in this uh, uh, post together with the country's contributions uh, team and everything else. So yeah, that's that's really nice blog post uh, which is back. Uh, and I don't know where to find the the U profile. There was a um, listing. It is on the community site. If you go to community, learn about the community, and then U profile. And the last one was in uh, one year. It was one year ago, as Lucy says, in October 2022. Ah, that's good. But it's good, it's good that it's back. It's good yeah. that it's back. Awesome. So that's the U profile, and we'll again link up the the the, the, the U profile um, in the description, and maybe we can grab some uh, people from being award, from awarded uh, group of people of U profiles to the Umbra Coffee yeah. soon. A uh, couple of things to 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 wrap up with. Uh, DX Talk, the podcast that we've been uh, mentioning a while ago, uh, is right now published, and there are a couple of episodes. Three episodes. Uh, three episodes with the prologue. Uh, and, and 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 more information being shared by the team, uh, also driven by the Umbraco HQ uh, members. So that's uh, interesting. I haven't listened to to it yet, but uh, uh, we can definitely share and, and explore and see if there's that's that's something what we will definitely be relying on or relating to. So this will, this episode is about the digital experience industry and some really cool. Uh, Topics, trends with the industry future of CMSs. So yeah, yeah. more composable and uh, and a helicopter view uh, about the CMSs. I would say uh, the talk uh, and uh, two things to mention by the end of the episode. Uh, the article um, about uh, the CSP and uh, passing it to the Google Tag Manager by Aaron uh, and uh, the nice write up on on how it can be combined. Uh, I don't know if, if you can play a lot with the CSP these days, but uh, I did try and I did used uh, the, the, the really nice tools that are uh, in the web. Uh, for example, report URI that analyzes and, and, and builds the CSP, helps in building this. But then I, yeah, the whole work that Aaron mentioned here is usually managed by someone who is experienced in Google Analytics and DTM. But it seems to be really nice written up uh, information how to do it. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And last but not least, a big congrats to Purnima for, for being uh, recognized as a JetBrains community contributor. That's, uh, I, 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 that, that I didn't, I know that JetBrains is doing a lot of the uh, nice community recognitions, but uh, it's the first time when I see this kind of uh, award uh, or, or recognition. Yeah, I, I think it's the equivalent of like an MVP or an ambassador award. Um, I was talking mm. to Purnima last night about it and she told me that she's got this, which is, Really cool, and of course, she's spoken at a bunch of JetBrains conferences. They do they mm -hmm. do invest a lot in the .NET space as a whole, and that's obviously something Pauline was particularly active in. So, yeah, it's only right that she's recognised. 
high five you roll yeah that's really nice and that's all what we have for you say it's all margin but i promised i promised mike we would Ooh. cover and bring back ah, yes. the of the week. and i've just put the three pull request nominees in the channel and we can uh Yes, can, uh, let me give me a second because I'm. I need to go through the <laughs> multi-level authentication on GitHub. Oh no! Because <laughs> I haven't, I haven't looked there for a while. For a while you know? <laughs> it's been that long. But I'm here. So triple requests, potential requests of the week, starting yes. from. Then we can choose a winner. New login page, uh, playwright test to ensure have show hide password. So. This is the playwright test scenario uh, written to yeah, validate the, 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 the login screen. So that's the competitor number one. This is the new login screen coming with 13, I'm guessing, because that's mm -hmm. they're removing the public facing angular bits, aren't they? So that's yeah. a, good, a good test case, that one. But, but also it's good to explore how playwright test looks like. And, and, and I've been investigating them uh, recently uh, too, and it's really, really handy. Tool to, to, to build a test scenarios like this. So yeah, that's the one. Second is uh, adding I exception handler feature check to dynamic root check. So uh, that's a pretty uh, in-depth so one. This one basically allows you to have a uh, previously Custom you exception handler. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't do um, you couldn't do an Umbraco node Umbraco page as like a as a as an error page. So you only you could only do static stuff. Uh, now, okay, so it just works. It just yeah, that was a discussion that we've uh, had on on either Slack or somewhere with how we can throw the custom error uh, yeah. when we are within the specific route and we don't have the handler. So that, yeah. oh, that's that's a really nice one. I've got some slightly disgusting code that does this in uh, some of our projects, and it effectively spins up a another web request to request a. A, a page that we've then gone and found based on a setting in the um, Umbraco site. It's not it's not pretty code, but this this looks great. I get I can replace a whole bunch of code here. And, uh, and, and again, ch check this how how kind of uh, simple and readable it, this implementation is, uh, and uh, and how big change it del delivers for the for the end use. Yeah, pretty really nice one. So that's the second and third is <laughs> updated Welsh line file come for you, uh, especially. Yes. Yes. You mentioned that you had some challenges understanding Welsh recently. Over the years, Owen's done a lot of contributions <laughs> to improving the Welsh language support for the back office. He's quite passionate about it, but also they've said they work with a lot of... So it was a legal requirement in Wales, in fact, for when you're working with, say, public sector to support this. So it's awesome to see Owen still, still doing this. And it looks like a big PR with a lot of updates. So uh, great work there. Yeah. I haven't loaded. I, I thought that this is just the, 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 the two, two lines of changes, but of course it's it's... Oh, that's that's a nice Welsh lesson. <laughs> so, Martin, do we choose a yeah, winner? Three of them. I know, I know who my winner is personally. Uh, I have my. Uh, oh, I just closed my winner. Close the winner. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Do we agree that this is the... goes to this one? Of course. Like, yeah. This is this is a big feature and something that people have wanted for a while. So, congratulations. So, yeah, big congrats to Mike. Uh, no, no, Mike, Mike merged it. Uh, so it's Bram Holden awesome. who, who created this pull request. So Bram. yeah, really nice. Awesome. So now we are we are now that's it for the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. So yeah, definitely people people tell us more about your activities, your Haftoberfest contributions. Uh, if there's anything cool, uh, interesting, challenging impossible to be done that you faced uh, inside of your uh, Hacktoberfest and not only let us know we can definitely highlight that and, and talk about it and maybe we can all talk about it together on the episode and and hey there will be anything else to mention besides all of the events that are happening uh, then we can uh, we can bring you here and talk about it soon Indeed. Yes, and and as a final reminder, also let us know about this work-life balance uh, discussions that we've raised today. If that would be an interesting topic to talk about, uh, we can uh, uh, spin up some additional exactly. slot to do so. Yeah, you uh, might be hearing from us sooner than you think, but otherwise, we'll see you <laughs> next Friday. Exactly. Uh, have, have a, a good. Great weekend, everybody. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>